I'm Rabbi John Levi, and I've been involved with the CCJ for many years. We needed a way to talk to Christians and Catholics in particular. We were all children of the Shoah. We were all affected by what happened in the Second World War, including the Catholics. And I guess the first few years we were actually quite dazed and silent and uncertain what we should do. Uh, then, of course, came Pope John the 23rd in 1962, told people they're going to have the Second Vatican Council to the astonishment of many people. I certainly don't remember noticing it wasn't my business, but it became my business as we tried to start a Council of Christians and Jews in Australia. It wasn't the first one, first time anybody had tried to do that, um, but it didn't resonate. We had some extraordinary Christian leaders who, uh, who took the time and trouble to fight anti-Semitism, and we had an inspiring speech by the very controversial Archbishop Daniel Mannix in Melbourne, who told the nuns that uh, Jesus had a Jewish mother. And that was in the time when Hitler was coming to power. So it was quite a statement. Religion in Australia was a very contentious issue for generations. The, you, you talked about the Archbishop of Melbourne or the Archbishop of Brisbane, and then you had to know which Archbishop, the Anglican one or the Catholic one. And the cathedrals competed you know, in, in architecture, in size, in prominence. Uh, it was all a, a really, really uh, intense competition for preeminence. And where did the Jews fit in all this? Well. They, they, they came through the middle. Um, the, the two major religious groups within the Christian world was, was, were so uh, busy competing that um, the Jewish community was a sort of a tranquil, very small part of the Australian religious scene. It took ages for anybody to think of inviting a rabbi to occupy a pulpit in a church in Melbourne, despite Hitler, but despite the uh, uh, coming storm, the, the religious communities were deeply divided. And after the war, I think we learned a lesson. And, uh, and then, of course, in Melbourne and then in Sydney came the survivors of the Holocaust. And again, uh, people looked at the world a different way. The church began to wonder what it should do in Australia, and the Sisters of Zion also wondered what they should do. After all, their mission had been from the very beginning, uh, the founding of the order by the Rattisbon brothers, that, that their job was to convert the Jews to Christianity. After the Holocaust, that didn't seem to be a very good idea, and they'd lost their mission. And they found it again, uh, remarkably, and uh, therefore uh, they chose one of their sisters, brilliantly chose, uh, Sister Shirley Sadawi in Melbourne, to do some preparation and study, which she did. She had a background in the Middle East in that her parents were Lebanese Christians. And um, Sister Callistus as she was known, turned up at our doorstep. Um, I was babysitting and she was in full regalia, in full habit. Um, our baby Catherine took her kindly, sat on her lap, played with her rosary beads and Sister Shirley, or Sister Callistus as she was, said, it's our job to start talking. And that was how it began. The whole idea came as a bit of a shock. 
for one thing, uh, the Jewish community in Melbourne, particularly, less so in Sydney, were basically survivors of the Holocaust, and many in Melbourne were from Poland, where, of course, anti-Semitism and the church was an enormous problem. So when we talked about having official meetings with the Sisters of Zion, there was a great deal of discomfort. Uh, however, the, the, the sisters went ahead, and so did we. And we had cooperation from Sydney. I'm talking about the Executive Council of Australian Jewry, which was the way in which the community here organised themselves. Um, without rabbinic leadership, but with rabbinic input. And uh, finally, we met at the residence of the Archbishop in Kew, um, a very tentative meeting. And we sat in the library of uh, the Archbishop's palace in Kew, and we, and we began to talk. Um, the Sisters of Zion established their home not far from the place where we'd met, and they put a sign in the front called Shalom. <laughs> well, a lot of people had tried to get, get the Jews before to make them convert to Christianity, but they meant it. They meant Shalom, and they established a very fine Jewish library at Shalom in Cotham Road in Kew. And, um, and so the meetings began, and they broadened in that uh, the Victorian community was read, ready for this, and, um, and so the Catholic-Jewish dialogue began, and we began by deciding to publish publications on the relationship between the Catholic Church and the Jews, and the uh, stories in the New Testament, which could give rise to misinterpretation. It was ground that had never been plowed. Um, and of course, with, with the uh, advent of John Paul II came the explicit confrontation with theological problems, which ended up with the church saying that um, uh, there was no mission to the Jews. The Jews were capable of, their, of finding their own salvation. 1971 it was. And um, people began to believe that these people were in the Australian idiom, fair income. They were really out to uh, establish lines of communication, which we have done. <laughs>